We've always seen Chris as cool and collected, but there have been times where he couldn't help but lash out. And one of the guys responsible for that was Victor Wells. You see, Chris was pretty calm throughout the sting, though you could see him struggling to not lose it as he read out the chat logs. Start out in your chat log saying, that you're a little bit concerned. Did you see how slyly he made that loser realize what he did while staying so freaking calm? If I were Chris, I'd have totally lost my cool right then and there. I mean, seriously, how does one stay so freaking chill? But man, things did get worse as Chris continued to read the disgusting conversation Victor had with the setup. Obviously, there is a limit to everyone's patience. And shockingly enough, Chris was very close to losing. Just when you thought Victor would give up, he started to manipulate Chris into believing his story. So just a role play, just a fantasy thing, that's all that was. Just a Play fantasy. Damn it, what? This guy was trying to convince Chris that the age debacle was just role play. I mean, of course, we all know he's lying, but just look at the balls this prick had. Apparently, they're big and he wanted to show them. Despite being caught red handed, Victor still cooked up random stories to try and get out of this sticky situation he found himself in. While he insisted that the setup was old enough, he had no idea that Chris already had the chat logs ready to go. So, after you're all concerned about her being 12, your tone shifts. You see how there was a whole shift in the tone of his voice? Yeah, that's Chris on his very last nerve. I mean, seriously, just listen to that disgusting chat history. How can you even say that to anyone, let alone the kind of person the setup was praying? Ask her if she's looking for some company for the weekend. Oh man, Victor totally had that one coming. And I have a feeling he kind of knew it too. Even though he knew how old she was, he still had the guts to show up at the house with a camera, a pack of bottles, food. Oh, and of course, the Le Piste de Resistance, a freaking love glove. Damn, what is up with these guys? Literally, pick on someone your own age. The fact that he had the skins alone is proof of intent, and that was the last straw for Chris. He finally lost it and went off on this guy. And trust me, he beyond deserved it at this point. Yeah, come on, who are you talking to here? You, she says she's 12, you talk about it, she doesn't give you any indication she's not, there's no indication of role pain. Pretty nuts though how quick Chris reached his breaking it. Let's take a look at what went down here. Chris started yelling at Victor because the guy just couldn't accept that his roleplay was as real as it got. Dude, we can all see the desperation on you. It ain't a good look, that's for certain. By this point, Victor had to have known he was in trouble. Oh, uh, but wait, there's more. Wait till you hear the excuse he gave for bringing the camera. Wanted to bring her to lunch and take a couple of pictures for her profile. Oh, please. He claimed it was just for some innocent profile pics, but come on. You know what he really wanted to use it, and so did Chris. Tons of folks were both shocked and puzzling surprised that Chris for once actually got real mad and loud, as evidenced by this comment. Admittedly, that's not something we really get to see. Considering Chris deals with guys like Victor all day, every day, you'd think he'd seen it all. Apparently not someone as vile as Victor. As for me, I totally get where this anger was coming from. After everything that went down in the chat logs, claiming that he only wanted to be friends was the lamest thing he could have said in his defense. You're right on the money, Adam. Chris was absolutely right to fly off the handle here, considering how doggedly defensive the guy was about his intent. Sadly for him, that fantasy only served to put him behind bars where he belonged. When it came to Jean-Pierre, Michael, or Jean, I don't know, Chris had no chill whatsoever. Kirk was so agitating that even before the episode began, Chris was ready to knock him down a peg. It was like uh, Weary had gone through an eco-challenge race. I mean, really, can you blame him? Dude was dying to get some action. Pretty much hiked all the way to the house, apart from a short ride he hitched on a bus here and there. Really no better way to describe him than this. And he's weary, thirsty. No doubt. Despite that, as soon as he entered the house, dude was on a roll. Not sure exactly what he was looking for, but he decided to barge right in and search the house from top to bottom. Of course, that's when Chris came up calling. Hey, sir, sir, could you come back over here, please? And have a seat right on there. You should be in a hurry there. Go ahead, have a seat right there, please. What followed next was the iconic question that Chris throws at every loser he comes across. Why are you here? Now came a pivotal moment where you can either be honest and admit everything right away, or you can lie and dig your own grave, which to nobody's surprise is what this prick decided to do. Try to do, try to find a job somewhere, and I heard about John Patterson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, unless that job had anything to do with getting into someone's pants, you're in the wrong house, buddy. What was he even talking about, though? Patterson who? The only Patterson I know is this guy. Yeah, he's the same monstrous excuse for a cop who was asked to strip right outside the house, and speaking of troll moments, I can't help but bring up this one killer line from Chris. So, Lieutenant. What's up? What are we investigating tonight? 
Not too much. In just a single sentence, Chris not only reminded Patterson of who he was, but also questioned his presence in the house. Anyway, coming back to the sicko we started with, Jean-Pierre desperately tried to convince Chris that he was here to meet some dude who apparently promised him a job. Of course, though, Chris wasn't buying his story. I mean, just listen to how absurd it sounds. I'm walking. So you were just walking down the road, and you thought that this fellow with a construction company lived in this house? Somebody told me that... That excuse made no sense at all. Really, there was no stopping, Pierre. Despite being at a loss for words, he made an attempt to slither away and confuse Chris on his way out. But who are we trying to fool here, eh? Chris's comeback here was a quintessential mic drop moment. No, you don't know everything I know. And the way he tapped the chat logs on that table, it sounded like the judge hitting his gavel after delivering a sentence. There was so much weight in those few words that the bozo finally got the memo. He knew there was no going back from here, and even Chris could almost read his mind. You could see that he knew that this wasn't going to work out to be a great story for him. Yeah, the only way he was going out would be in cuffs. You've been using my name. And guess what? We definitely aren't running low on sass today. In fact, I'm even gonna crank it up a notch with some double trouble headed your way. Ever witness a pair of losers getting grilled together? Now, you might think of a few guys like Sebastian Rodriguez with his tag-along friend who just couldn't stop sipping on his energy drink. But also there's Polkit Mathur who brought his buddy along to take a dip in the hot tub. Today, though, I'm talking about Yasmin Ismail. Now, this dude didn't show up with his friend like the ones I just spoke about, but that doesn't mean he didn't meet anyone like mine. This boy, 213. And and tennis boy, this is uh, slave to right? Well, that was awkward. I just drawn up to the house to meet someone special, and then this is what you find. Definitely not part of the plan, am I right? Yasmin was at a loss for words. Took him an entire minute to realize what was happening. Oh, and then he finally decided to speak. But Chris was in no mood to listen. Well, it sure seems like he had a lot of plans in this chat. As for the other moron here, simply lost all his patience. When he tried to make a move, you won't believe how Chris shut him down. I made the decision to come in here, but you just, I'm going to get back with you in a minute because I have a couple questions for you. What were you planning on doing here tonight? Might just be the kind of way to say shut up, but the level of sass, unparalleled. Yasmin being the idiot that he was was trying to act all stupid, like, Hello, what's happening here? Maybe I don't belong here. Can I pretty please weave? Oh, whoa. Oh, I feel the same, man. Either way, the other dude made sure to make things crystal clear for him. Uh -huh. But Khan clearly knows what's You're coming. Here. You're, yeah, we're, we're, we're both gonna get arrested. <laughs> well, at least one of the psychos got the memo. Meanwhile, the TCAP community was going nuts over Chris's wit and humor in the best possible way. Most viewers joined in on the fun and said these weirdos probably hung out together long after their prison time. One user was quoted as saying, Lamau, you describing them sticking together after their arrest in prison would be a great premise for a movie, lol. LOL indeed. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. As Yasmin was cooling his heels behind bars, a whole brand new chapter was gearing up on the other side. This time I'm talking about a teacher who wasn't into the traditional teaching gig. Dude was bringing a whole new level of excitement to the table, and for him, there were no boundaries between edumacation and something much more disturbing. Good? Tough drive? This is Stanley Kendall, a grandpa-looking figure, and his entire interview with Chris was an entire mess. Stanley really thought he'd be taking special classes that day, but guess who walked in to take his case? What was the uh, lesson plan for tonight? Oops. Sorry for what? Chris didn't skip a beat before laying down the savagery and giving Stanley a piece of his mind. And it didn't end there. Chris, in an assertive tone, made sure Stanley understood what he'd done and how wrong it actually was. This was a joke. You thought, what was a joke? Well, I should've known better. A joke? You kidding me? The actual joke was you coming here thinking you had a shot at getting whatever the heck you thought you'd get from here. Now, let's not forget that he's the same guy who shared an upteen number of graphic images of himself with the setup, before actually hitting the wheels and driving all the way around town. Crazy to think that this dude was in the teaching profession for 23 long years. Ugh, his students are about the same age as the one he'd come to meet, too. Sad to see that the schools aren't as safe as we'd all like to believe thanks to sickos like this one. Weirdos like Stanley have turned places of learning into an entire circus. Just when this loser realized he had no way out, he brought out the religion card. But Chris decided to call him on his BS. So what part of the, the Bible tells you to say all this kind of stuff here in the chat? Ah, uh, sorry boss, no God's gonna save your face today. If this idiot didn't make you feel sick, get ready for the next one. We got a real crybaby who refused to own up to anything here. Yeah. Hmm. You walk around. Come in.
This wimp who couldn't even bring himself to set foot in the house was none other than Corey Edgar. After giving it a lot of thought, he finally mustered the courage to walk himself into the house. But guess what? That confidence did not last long. Chris was all set to start him off with some slow blows. I don't, I wasn't planning on any of this. Good, I wanna hear the whole story. At first, Corey was hell-bent on the idea that he didn't do anything wrong, but that came to a full stop when Chris raised chats out aloud. And this is what the moron had to say. I never knew a young female like yourself would like that. And then you're, you chose, then you chose you're some reservations. I'm, I'm, I'm not arresting you. Scribe every year started blaming anyone but himself, and that's when Chris decided to put him in his place. My fault, it's not her not fault. Not your fault, Rick. You kept going with the conversation. I about came your here story. because I was going to get cigarettes. Whoa. It's weird to see Chris absolutely mad, and he's absolutely mad at this guy. And really, who wouldn't be? This bozo was whining and crying like a little kid who got caught with his hands in the chocolate jar or something like that. Just the sound of his voice is annoying. He has a very punchable face, too. Either way, there was no stopping him. He just went on and on and on and on and on and on about how he was never gonna come here, and all he wanted to do was go fishing. Guess who got caught in the net, you idiot? Fishing. What, you thought they sold cigarettes at this house? No. Do you think I they sell not. gas at this house? No, I did not. Right on the money, Chris. No way you can mistake a whole damn house for a grocery store. Seriously, though, that's just ridiculous. Chris was fully aware that Corey would be arrested as soon as he made his exit, but despite that, he had to throw in a single last blow. I just feel like I'm gonna throw up. Uh, well, that's maybe another good reason to go outside. Oh, that was a good one. Really worth it. Corey was quite the character, and he definitely deserved every bit of the humiliation thrown his way. But this next guy is gonna give him a run for his money in that department. Allow me to introduce you to Jesse Velez. And this was his reason to be at the house. What was your plan today? Nothing, actually. Just to hang out. Yeah, sure. Why not? Wait, what was the whole deal with the chat logs then? What, uh, what, 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 what you guys say about that, huh? Huh? Well, it turns out Jesse had some issues with his memory. And Chris here? Well, he was ready to shred him to bits. Ooh. I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to do that. Ooh, it was right. Yeah. Classic Chris right there, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. Make matters worse, Jesse decided lying was a good idea, and we all know how much Chris hates liars. Watch your pictures of me? Right. So I must have hit that, but I didn't know why. So this was just one big mistake? Yeah. Yeah, that's my man starting to get mad, but that's not stopping Chris from trolling the hell out of Jesse. This is just one big misunderstanding. This is the, and biggest, the first time you've ever had such a walked in someone's house. Every minute that passed, Jesse only was getting more annoying, though. We didn't want to take any amount of responsibility for his actions whatsoever, but obviously Chris wasn't going to back down on this loser as of yet. Make things more embarrassing, Chris started pointing out different things that the loser could have done instead of coming here. Oh, he actually even lives there. Uh, that's, that's to be honest. Don't do the same thing to other people that you wouldn't want done to you. Gee, it's about being a hypocrite. So this dude here was talking about how you got to be careful with trespasses and stuff like that, and yet he himself walked right into the sting house. Ugh, I, I hate people like this so much. Well, either way, Jesse was putting up some major acting skills, and for a second, it did look like he was disgusted by his own actions. And, but we all know that there's absolutely no truth in that. I'm actually surprised to see Chris keeping his calm throughout the whole interview. Sadly for Jesse, though, his bullshit story did not get him too far, and neither did this next guy who probably picked the best outfit he had, only to get arrested in it. Take a seat. I'm right here standing. That's our Thomas Coffin. Da -da 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 -da. For some reason, though, Chris clearly couldn't wait any longer and popped up right in front of him. Chris confronted this moron about the disgusting pictures he sent, and apparently it was nothing but a big mistake. I'm sure it was. Oh, wait, you won't believe what he said next, though. Dead. I'm, I'm a person I don't like being in getting in any any trouble big sorry do you just say that you're not someone who gets into trouble I, I, I don't think you should be too sure about that man because if that was the case what the heck are you doing here let's not forget about all the nasty stuff you said online it's really freaking gross actually either way it looks like Chris feels the same way as I do which is why this is what he said next well how could you expect not to get into trouble by setting up a date yeah tell him Chris I want to see this guy cry. You know what Thomas said, though? Well, apparently it was his cousin who shared the messages and not him. Come on, dude. It's like the lamest excuse in the book. Why isn't your cousin here, then? I mean, it's time for some honesty, for real. And can we please just cut the poor cousin some slack? I'm sure he's actually quite a lovely person. Only crime he's guilty of is being related to this idiot who's clearly got a wild imagination. Stuff underneath my name, too. Which You're not trying to tell me that you didn't have this no, conversation. No, I, I typed this. You typed this. There was no intentions. Do you think Chris was really that stupid to believe his story? In your dreams, jackass. Guess what he was carrying in that little pocket of his, though? A love glove. Yet, though, he had the nerve to say that he always had one on him. 
at all times. What Chris does next made the loser rethink every decision he made that led up to this point, though. You always carry them right here in your yeah. breast pocket. But for easy access? No. This guy just lost his whole train of thought because his actual truth came out and he knew he was screwed. It's honestly pretty disheartening to witness these guys roll up to the house with absolutely no shame whatsoever. Chris though, well, he's got this uncanny knack for handling them. Moving on though, he's ready to tackle the next addition to the loser lineup. So good. Did you make them? Yeah, I made them myself. All right, I eat one. I like chocolate chip. This loser got real comfy real fast and his name is David Schumacher. This wannabe Eminem was in for a ride for sure. Users over the interwebs have no chill whatsoever, and this one user comments how David walked into the house like he was about to record his debut album. Like, that's how confident he was. It was massive. What's more, dude had cranked up the rudeness level to the max, but he had no idea who he was dealing with. And Chris decided to shut him down in the most iconic of ways. To the birthday party. Who are you? I'll get to that in a minute. The amount of attitude this guy had surprises me. So much attitude, and for what? Couldn't even come by himself. He literally had to make his sister drive him here. Despite that, though, he had the audacity to threaten Chris. For what? Haven't exposed you? Looking stupid? By this time, the arrogance was just way over the line, and Chris was over and done with him. Like law enforcement. I happen to know law enforcement. You do. So you're an expert in this area. No, no, I'm just saying you. I have to shut him up. Good. That wasn't enough. Chris hit him with this next one. You come off as law enforcement. Really? So you know how you come off? How's that? Somebody who's very nervous. He took a good minute to process that, and that should help him stay mum for a while now. Chris then went on to read from the chats, and the dude looked visibly shocked. Honestly though, no matter how good an act you put up, nothing's gonna really help you get out of the situation right now. Just when the cameras came out, you wouldn't believe what Chris said. Are you filming? We are filming. I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Did y'all hear that? Chris is just effortlessly cool. How does he even say stuff like that so easily? Must come naturally to him, which is exactly what made the show as iconic as it is. It's wild how each new guy on our list just keeps out doing the last one. It's like an ongoing spectacle of douchebaggery. Anyway, moving from one douchebag to another, we got this dude. I made some brownies. You want some? Oh, no. Are you sure? Yeah, can we just go upstairs for a little bit? All right, all right, hold it right there. What's the hurry, pally? All right, this loser who wanted to get straight to business is Ernest Timmons. Timmons brought him something that cements his intentions for the night, a camera. Yeah, dude not only wanted to have a memorable night, but also wanted to carry a few mementos back home. Now he sure was gonna make a few memories, but that's not the one he'd wanna keep. That's cause as soon as Chris entered the scene, his personality took an entire new turn. He immediately started playing the victim card, and let me tell ya, sounded like one of the fakest stories I've ever heard. But I guess it was time to cut the crap. Perfectly, why do you think I'm just as stunned as you are? Oh, well, you're stunned because you got caught. Wait, Chris had a smile plastered on his face the entire entire time? That's exactly the kind of common content I want. See, Ernest had no intention of accepting what he was at the house to do. He repeatedly blamed some random dude for setting him up. Kind of predictable, right? Who are we messing with, though? Chris decided to drop a bomb. Who try to meet kids online. <laughs> Please, sir. That's one way to say it, and there's no way of sugarcoating any of it. Well, Chris had always had a way with his words, and that's something nobody can take away from him. See, the kind of stuff Ernest could have been capable of with a camera in hand is pretty disturbing. But this next dude was pretty concerned about something entirely different. You see, Anthony Palumbu brought something which he shouldn't have to the house. But this is where things got hilarious. You can put that in the fridge. Yeah, I'll put it in a little bit. All right. Yeah, he was persistent in getting those bottles into the fridge. Looks like my man here likes his stuff chilled. He was obsessed with getting the stuff into the refrigerator that he repeatedly, and I mean it on and on, insisted on having them moved to the chiller. Honestly, too bad he didn't even get to enjoy a drop of it. But the internet didn't spare one minute to poke fun at him. Let's see what excuses he has up his sleeve, shall we? No, and my brother is home, my other brother. Right. And I said, I gotta go to Atlantic City. And, but instead you came here. Yeah, he was on his way to meet his brother and suddenly uh, decided to stop by. In which case, I think he's in the wrong house personally. It was time for him to show who the boss was here. I like to gamble. Yeah, I love to gamble. You took a little bit of a gamble coming in. I don't think Palumbo understood what Chris meant though. And he tried to play it off in the best way possible or maybe try to act dumb. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just a narrator. One thing's for sure though, he knew he was in big trouble and Chris wasn't gonna let him go home too easily. Did you notice something though? Chris was actually trying to have a normal convo, but Palumbo went full throttle. I'm not what gay or anything. I'm just saying. Well, this isn't about gay No, I'm straight. just saying. I'm straight. Nobody I'm just cares saying. what adults do. Just 
look at him trying so hard not to lose his shit, but he ended up acting like a complete fool. Chris was definitely trying to keep his cool, but we all know that sassy mouth of his ain't gonna stay quiet for long. There is home, my other brother. Right. And I said, I gotta go to Atlantic City. But instead you came here. It's those slight blows that made Palumbo lose his cool, and I think he did put up quite a show for us. Too. Either way, this next loser really got on Chris's nerves big time. And when things got real bad, he had to bring out the big guns and go for it. Now, this guy made this vile story of his into a whole different thing. That's right, I'm talking about Mohammed Abdallah. Interview hadn't even begun, and Chris was already raining down sass upon him. Yeah. Yeah. And so you just happened to be going by, and you saw this blonde woman out there, and she waved at you. And that's one way to put it. We could stop there, right? Well, he didn't. <laughs> Yes, she waved that explains me. everything, doesn't she, it? She waved at me. She on. just waved at you. Looks like Chris was having a field day. There was no stopping him. He had his mindset on dressing this douchebag down, and that is exactly what he did. You just walked right in. No, not just walk. Just the why I ask her, you know, what, what's his door? What an amazing coincidence. You know? Chris was totally having the time of his life making a whole fool out of this guy here, and we're all for it. I mean, Muhammad was being so confident, he definitely deserved extended time in prison. And Chris made sure he got that memo. You're a oh, lucky guy. Friend, you just, just driving along in this good-looking young girl waves in. Yeah, the entire troop was out in the open, and Muhammad knew the only option left now was to throw in his religion card and get out of it. And not so fast, though, buddy, because it looks like the cops waiting outside would like a word with you. <laughs> However, this next guy pulled a different stunt. There were no lame excuses, no blunt lies. Instead, John Wesley thought he was the king of comedy. Sorry to break it to you, John. Nobody's laughing. You were asking me about what I was daydreaming about. Well, that's it. You nude and me licking you. Oh, able to punch guys like this through our screens. I'm sure Chris would appreciate the help. Don't feel too bad for feeling that way, though, because this guy really did deserve it. You see, John had been spewing all sorts of disgusting stuff in the chats and kept it up even at the sting house. Gosh, you're pretty. Right off the bat, Chris was on the verge of losing it. Started to read the chats, and oh boy, you could see that he wanted to strangle the life out of him right then and there. But before I reveal what actually went down, humor me and let me keep building up that suspense. Just as Chris started to confront this huge piece of garbage, John started rolling out the excuses. Well, just everything in my life is just, it's all screwed up. I mean, is this guy for real? Blaming your lot in life for bringing you here? Yeah, i go again, buddy. As Chris kept questioning him, John started crapping his pants. Uh, figuratively, I mean. But he was probably close in life, stumbling over a story like that. Gotta hand it to Chris, though. He knew exactly how to handle the sitch and was doing a damn good job at it. But it was time for Chris to bring out the big gun. This guy denied every accusation thrown at him, despite having an online paper trail a mile long. But things are about to get even more heated. While you've seen a few of these guys sweating bullets and others trying to bounce the first opportunity, this one pulled something new out of his hat. <laughs> Oh man, did you see that? Chris asked him something really serious. And how did this moron act? Tried to laugh it off like it was no big deal. That's gonna look good in court, buddy. At this point, I'd love for someone to knock some sense into his small brain and explain to him that it wasn't a joke. He was right in the middle of a legit sting op. There's nothing funny about it, except for us. But wait, isn't that Chris's job? To give these jerks a hard reality check? Well, we're gonna get there. It baffles me how this guy thought he could simply joke his way out of a situation as dire as this. Just who was this guy fooling? Anyway, I have nothing to complain about because his actions only made things worse, especially for himself. That's when Chris hit his breaking and decided to remind this moron of something really important. This is funny? No, this is a big joke. Gave me chills too, and I didn't even do anything wrong. John's gotta be feeling it. This all it takes is just a good stare down, and Chris can put another level of fear in the worst. Chris had him cornered, and his lies exposed. Despite all that, though, John had the nerve to suggest something. That fast in the back of my head. This guy got caught up in a big old giggle fit after saying that. He got zero self -less. At that point, Chris lost it completely. Some viewers were really shocked by his response, but a ton more really enjoyed Chris's flying on handle. Like this guy said, Chris was at the top of his game. Hard agree my guy. I don't know about the killing part, though. Uh, that, that's... Did I mention that he actually did call Chris a therapist, though? You're a therapist, I know. I mean, I just... You think I'm a therapist? Yeah, that did happen. Either way, it didn't end well. Nor will it end well for his next freak, a postman who came knocking at the door. But hold up. What are you up to? Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Doesn't have any letters to deliver. This freak right here is Eugene Daly, and while I say he was a postman, turns out at the time of this sting, Eugene was unemployed. I'm sure he must have done something crazy to get sacked. This guy thought he'd hit the beach to get some hot action, but guess who we bumped into? Chris, of course, and he wasted no time in bursting Eugene's bubble. You see, on that particular day, Chris woke up and chose 
chose to be brutal. And I don't blame him. Had it been me, I'd do the same thing too, and probably worse. Because this loser's chats were another level of disgusting. And if I paid you guys, I don't think you'd believe me. He literally said that she was the daughter he never had. Like, there are layers of ick to unpack in that sentence. Since he went on saying, I wanna touch you, hold you, and whatnot, this guy was a freak of the highest order. You know what? Chris Hansen was right to get mad at this guy. Right from the get-go, his anger was rising. You only come over a half hour because you gotta oh, pick yeah. up your wife. Well, I wasn't gonna, you know, I was saying. Where's your wife? I told you, right? You could literally see the guy turning red. And I gotta admit, I absolutely do love it when Chris goes off on this guy. He's had it coming for ages at this point. He even tried to say that he'd go pick up his wife from work in half an hour. Now she's gonna be waiting a long time. No truck ain't gonna be home today. Instead, it's headed straight to the police station for a special delivery. Chris was in no mood to listen to this guy's dumb excuses or how he knew it was all a setup. Yeah, right. That's why you showed up here, right? Chris knew this dude needed a wake-up call and he had no choice but to be hard on him because this guy started freaking out, screaming, shouting, trying everything to get out of the sitch. But let me tell you, there's no escaping Chris. He'll be dragging him straight to jail. But hey, maybe your wife will come pick you up from the station. No. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, what's right here? Station. Now, Chris was livid since the dude wanted to go all the way with her within the next half hour. Like, he was that desperate just to get into her pants. Remember how he said that he saw her like a daughter? Ugh, gag. Alabama, maybe. After the cameras came out, this guy started blaming Chris for ruining life. Chris didn't make you come out here, dude. Viewers really did enjoy the episode, since it's not every day guys like him lose their minds completely. Also, this comment does kind of convey those feelings pretty well. You know what? I actually want to watch the unedited version, too. Because if it was too crazy for TV, you know the drama had to have been beautiful. Another viewer talked about how guys like Eugene assume that Chris is the setup's dad. Ignorance or stupidity. Of. Anyway, if it actually was Chris's kid on the show, these guys wouldn't make it out of the sting house alive. If he's getting this heated about a setup, I don't even want to imagine what happened if it was his own. Let's indulge in one last comment and move on to the next guy on our list. The daughter he never had. I make it so much worse. For the final guy on my list today, we have Kevin Westerbeck, who is here to meet Destiny. Oh, he'd meet his destiny, all right. Sentenced to prison once already. Oh, man, I really did bet Chris be fuming this hard. Like, look at his face and especially his eyes. What's got him this round up, you might ask? Well, Kevin came to the house to meet Destiny, but get this, he had a court hearing the next week for quite literally the same thing he was already here for. Yeah, that's right, this wasn't his first time round the block. Guess he decided to try his luck one last time. But do must have put it all on black when the roulette came up red, since all he got was more trouble and far more jail time. I was just talking. Just talking. Well, man, I wouldn't want to be in Kevin's shoes right now. Chris unleashing all his anger has got to be horrifying. He definitely didn't hold back and rightly so, because this dude didn't deserve an ounce of sympathy. I mean, even in the chat logs, it was beyond disgusting. Destiny would ask him something innocent, and Kevin would somehow turn it into something explicit. I mean, I'm pissed after reading that. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely cannot stand hearing this stuff. No wonder Chris was in rage mode. Kevin kept coming up with one excuse after another. Come on, we all know exactly what he was there for. The trap was set, and now it's shut on him. I'm just gonna plan on meeting her, say hi, how you doing, and that's hi, how it. how you doing? Kevin kept repeating that he did nothing wrong and was just there for no reason. Chris wasn't buying it. Dude was going around in circles. When Chris revealed that it was all part of the show, Kevin was in complete shock. He realized that this meant more trouble for him with a longer sentence and a lifetime where everybody would know who he truly was. Ugh, caught red-handed and there was no escaping. Anyway, I don't think anyone else but Chris could roast these guys with a straight face. These were just some of the times that Chris got pissed on TCAP. But these aren't nearly the only times he's been on his last nerve, so come on down to On My Channel's Discord server where we can keep the discussion going for free. And for those of you who always ask for that little bit extra, I got an exclusive server just for you. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazy. See you all next time.